Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Curious Kingdom. Today we are recapping science fiction movie Proximity. Back in 1979, a man named Carl Weissner finished his day's work as a lumberjack in Rangel, Alaska. He was driving with his three colleagues in their trucks, following behind. Suddenly, Carl's radio stopped working, and the truck ahead of him flipped over. Carl slammed on the brakes and rushed to check on his colleagues. To his surprise, a spinning UFO appeared, and he ran toward the forest. The UFO caught up to him, emitting a blue light that immobilized him. Eventually, he was taken by the UFO. In the present day, a young man named Isaac Cypress worked as a computer engineer at NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory in California. Isaac, along with his colleagues Beck and Greta, monitored signals and movements of satellites. They noticed a strange signal from Canada, even though there were no satellites there. Isaac sent the signal into space from one of their satellites. That night, Isaac received another signal from an unknown source. He became curious but didn't take immediate action. After his work shift, Isaac spoke with his counselor, who suggested he create a video diary to express his feelings. Isaac started recording video diary entries, sharing his thoughts and leaving messages for his family. During a hike in the woods, Isaac saw a burning object fall from the sky. He decided to investigate while staying hidden under the International Space Research Program. He saw the spinning UFO again but couldn't capture it on camera. Suddenly, he noticed an alien creature behind him. He discreetly recorded a video of the alien before it turned away. Isaac ran from the alien but was hit by a blue light. The news reported the fallen object as a meteorite, and Isaac woke up three days later near the sea. He found his video camera and watched the footage, which revealed a blurry image of the alien. He also saw how he was abducted by the aliens when the blue light struck him. Isaac was in shock, staring blankly at the horizon, when he suddenly felt a sharp pain in one of his forearms. Upon returning home to his apartment, he discovered a strange ability. He could make his television disappear just by looking at it. Confused, he began to question if he was hallucinating as he experimented with making objects around him vanish and reappear. The next day, he visited a doctor for a checkup after a strange incident. An x-ray revealed a perfectly straight, hair-thin fracture on his forearm, which was a precise and unusual cut. Afterward, he went to NASA's JPL to talk to his colleague Beck. Isaac attempted to demonstrate his newfound ability by making a cup disappear. Isaac showed Beck the recorded footage of the alien encounter and his abduction, but Beck couldn't determine if it was real. Beck informed Isaac that he had been absent from work for a week and that their boss had been looking for him. Later, Greta joined them, suspicious of the fallen object's meteorite explanation due to lack of evidence. Isaac uploaded his footage to the internet, which quickly went viral, sparking both belief and skepticism. Journalists and news outlets contacted him for interviews, leading to a televised interview with journalist Christine Schaefer. During the interview, Isaac detailed his abduction experience, while Christine posed doubting questions, frustrating him. As more people questioned the authenticity of his abduction, Isaac decided to search for more evidence of alien encounters online. He discovered a blog post by Sarah, who shared a similar experience and arranged to meet her at a diner. In the diner, Isaac hallucinated, seeing objects floating, and discussed their shared experiences with Sarah. She mentioned an alien abduction incident in Alaska in 1979. Isaac shares his contact information with Sarah before she leaves the diner. A few days later, Sarah contacts Isaac and shares additional details about the 1979 abduction of Carl Masoner in Alaska. As Isaac's video faced international skepticism, he became determined to gather concrete evidence. He distributed copies of his abduction footage to various space agencies and encountered Keith Oberman, a man claiming to be a writer, while mailing the tapes. Keith offers to help Isaac publish his true feelings about the alien encounter and provides his business card. Isaac visits Keith's office the next day, where Keith suggests taking a lie detector test to solidify the authenticity of his abduction story. Isaac agrees and passes the test. However, Keith abruptly leaves, and men in black suits knock Isaac unconscious. Upon waking up, Isaac finds himself dragged by android soldiers in a large room. Sarah is held captive in a separate room. Keith, now revealed as Agent Graves discloses his true identity and the ISRP's involvement in monitoring Isaac's exposure to aliens. He reveals alien tracking devices in their arms and tests Isaac's abilities. Isaac learns about Carl Masoner and the search for him in British Columbia. 
Isaac overpowers the android soldiers, frees Sarah, and they escape using his abilities. They find themselves in a remote Costa Rican forest, chased by the android soldiers. Forced to reach out to Carl, they seek help from Zed, a hacker with internet access. They learn that the ISRP is a secret agency working for the United Nations. Sarah opens up about her own abduction experience, and Isaac shares his reasons for uploading the abduction video. Zed reveals that Carl's location is elusive, prompting Isaac to recall the Canadian signal detected at NASA. They hack a satellite to pinpoint Carl's location in British Columbia. They connect with Carl through a video call, learning about the impending arrival of the aliens in five days through an audio signal. Carl abruptly ends the call after sharing this information. Isaac convinces Sarah and Zed to join him in meeting Carl and the aliens. The trio embarks on a journey to British Columbia. Isaac, Sarah, and Zed avoid public transportation to evade capture by Agent Graves and the android soldiers. Zed's connections help them board a plane out of Costa Rica. Agent Graves tracks their departure and orders all agents and android soldiers to meet in Canada to search for them, including Carl. Upon reaching British Columbia, they take a train towards the nearest town to Carl's cabin. While on the train, Sarah and Isaac get to know each other better. Zed's laptop alerts them to the presence of android soldiers, and they use masks to confuse the cameras. They manage to avoid detection and temporarily thwart the android soldiers. Arriving at Carl's cabin, security cameras spot them, and Carl emerges with a shotgun. Recognizing their faces, Carl allows them inside and deactivates the trackers in their arms. This action cuts off contact with Agent Graves. Unbeknownst to them, Agent Graves reactivates an arrest warrant for Carl and mobilizes ISRP forces to the cabin. Inside, Carl explains that he had been abducted by aliens and subsequently pursued by the ISRP. He has been collecting equipment to make contact with the aliens and decode their audio signals. Carl reveals that he deciphered a message indicating the aliens' imminent arrival on Earth. Isaac believes Carl's invention could enable communication with the aliens. Carl shares his own alien abduction experience from 1979. Sarah discovers a phonograph in the cabin, and they listen to music, creating a reflective moment. Two days before the aliens' expected arrival, Zed explores Carl's equipment and is caught by Carl. Zed expresses admiration for Carl's radio transmitters and their connection to audio signals. He wonders how Carl learned about audio signals and their potential significance. Outside the cabin, Isaac and Sarah enjoy the natural surroundings, gradually opening up about their feelings. Sarah notes that she feels different since their encounter with the aliens, pondering if it's a result of their exposure and whether this change is positive. One night, Sarah wakes up and finds Isaac outside. They have a heartfelt conversation where Isaac expresses his gratitude for meeting Sarah. The next day, the sound of rumbling signifies the alien's arrival. Isaac encounters an alien for the second time, joined by Carl and Sarah. He, Carl, and Sarah have a face-to-face -face meeting with one of the aliens. They successfully communicate by using Carl's translation device. Isaac confronts the alien and asks about the reason for their abductions. The alien explains that they have already conquered fields like science, medicine, technology, and the physical world. Now, they seek to learn about more profound matters, such as the origin of the universe. The alien presents a vision of Jesus Christ's image, revealing that they consider Jesus Christ a significant connection to understanding the universe's origins. The aliens abduct humans to study them because knowledge about Jesus Christ is highly accessible to humans. Sarah questions the cause of their sore arms, and the aliens reveal the tracking devices implanted within them. These devices serve as records for the aliens. During this time, Sarah's device is removed, coinciding with the arrival of ISRP agents surrounding Carl's cabin. The alien informs Isaac that his struggle to provide proof is challenging due to living in a world where seeing is believing. Agent Graves contacts Carl, discussing his father's death, who is apparently a colleague among lumberjacks in Alaska. Despite Carl's limited knowledge of his father's activities, Agent Graves accuses him of lying and shoots him with laser guns. Sarah intervenes and is shot by the agents. The alien removes Isaac's tracking device and advises him to rely on his senses. Isaac follows this advice, utilizing his senses and newfound abilities to fight against Agent Graves and the ISRP agents. He employs telekinesis and time manipulation to defeat the agents, rescuing Sarah, Carl, and Zed, and escaping from the cabin. Later, the aliens heal Sarah and Carl. 
The group quietly departs from the agents, using the alien's UFO to leave the cabin. Agent Graves is left bewildered. Witnessing the UFO's departure, six months later, Isaac uses telekinesis to control his video camera and records another diary entry. Isaac and Sarah begin a new life together in Costa Rica, where they establish an eatery in a small town. Isaac subtly applies his developed skills in their daily lives. Meanwhile, Zed and Carl form a partnership and work for a new underground tech intelligence agency. Agent Graves faced consequences for his abuse of authority, resulting in his dismissal. Knight believes film's runtime of two hours wasn't fully utilized, leaving some plot aspects unexplored. For instance, Agent Graves' emotional baggage regarding Carl's father was suddenly revealed lacking foreshadowing throughout the movie constantly bothering me even while making this recap. With script and plot execution improvements, it had the potential for a more effective portrayal. That's all for today folks. Like, share and subscribe for more such content. Curious Knight signing off. Stay safe stay curious.